Hello, this is Gary from ABC Electric. Um, welcome. Um, I'm going to start a, a YouTube channel, um, or at least make a few videos, um, which I've been watching other electricians do, um, to help, I suppose, promote the business um, and uh, for people to um, get an understanding of what we do uh, on a daily basis. Um, and what the life of an electrician is like. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to start. So I'm sat in the van. Uh, I've got an appointment going to look at a job later on. Um, so this is uh, really my first attempt. Uh, so I'm just using my phone. Um, I've got no fancy equipment. Um, and that's about it. I've got no script, as you can tell. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the idea really is, um, to, I suppose, upload a video every couple of weeks or so, uh, maybe look at uh, an interesting project like, um, an electric vehicle charge point installation, maybe a board swap, um, maybe a rewire, uh, maybe some fault finding, um, just a day-to-day -day life, um, and explain what we do and how we go on and it's also a good opportunity so that um, potential clients can get to know me um, see what I'm like um, and uh, yeah I'm just going to have a play around with it and see how things work out so uh, I'm not expecting too much of it um, but I thought it was, was going to be worth a go and ultimately it's all about maybe um, raising your profile increasing your SEO ranking um, and getting more work so really a little bit about me, uh, so my name's Gary, um, I'm, I live in Altrincham, um, I'm an NIC, EIC registered domestic electrician and I've been for uh, a good many years. Um, I did a degree in electronic, electrical and electronic engineering uh, many, many years ago in the 80s, um, so I'm fairly well qualified. <laughs> Um, with a good understanding of uh, uh, electrical engineering um, and the concepts involved and over the years from the days in industry through to now being a domestic uh, and, and commercial electrician I've worked on everything from you know um, small DC systems right through to 3.3 kV um, and many things in between 110 volt obviously standard 230 volt 415 volt three phase i've worked abroad on stuff um so i've got uh well over 35 years experience in the industry um and i've got a lot of other experience in construction um as well um although primarily uh, I've, I've been a lead electrician most of the time but I've worked in industry say commercial sector and now I mainly concentrate on the uh, domestic sector um, and I do you know you, what your standard domestic electrician does um, so one week it'll be full of fitting sockets extra lighting points maybe fitting a hive I do some alarms you know outside lights security lights um, small jobs could be two or three of those a day um, other times I get rewires so I might be on a whole job for, for two even three weeks um, and in between I do a lot of um, electric vehicle charging points where um, I'm OZEV registered it used to be OLEV so that's the office for zero emission vehicles funnily enough the EV doesn't stand for electric vehicle office for zero emission vehicles um, so that's your low carbon technologies which basically is an electric vehicle now um, so I claim the grant as well on behalf of the client the paperwork's a bit onerous um, but in most qualifying installations for instance where you've got off-road parking you've not claimed the grant before the vehicles on the uh, government list uh, approved list and the charge point is um, then you get 350 pounds off um, the installation um, so you know most of those are relatively straightforward are those you know in in under a day but i do get the odd charge point where there's 50 meters of cable because the boards at one end of the house and the products go in you know in the garage or or outside somewhere else so there can be a long run of cable sometimes and uh and that you know the clipping 
is what um, doing things to regulations and, and clipping the cable is, is is one of the things that takes time there. So uh, an electric charge point installation isn't based on the cost of it. Really, is, is based on how much cable there is and how long the clipping is because fitting a subboard or um, or reconnecting to a, a Type A uh, RCD or RCBO uh, on an existing board is relatively straightforward. A few hours work. Um, and then if you were going to drill a hole and put a metre of cable in, um, yeah, I'd, I'd do two a day. I've never had one of those, though. <laughs> I've had one, in fact, near enough. Um, but the big problem with uh, with EV charge points is people think they've got electricity to a garage. They don't realise that um, 32 amps um, isn't a 2.5mm um, armoured supply or even a spur to a garage. So you've got to have access um, to, to mainly, the, normally the main meter tails or, or the main DB. And the problem with that is you don't come across many DBs on a regular basis which have got, which are to current standards, I, not even current standards, um, improved standards, which is type A RCD protection. Um, I think type A C RCDs and RCBO should be banned, abolished, because they're not fit for purpose in a, in a modern domestic dwelling anymore, let alone commercial or industrial but that's a different story for another day and I don't write the wiring regulations I just uh, try to conform to them um, in a daily basis on a daily basis so um, that's a little bit about me oh, what else do we do we do a lot of board swaps I say we I'm a one-man business I've had apprentices I've had other people working for me I've reverted to being on my own maybe it's because of my age I don't know um, but I finally get things done um, I'm not relying on anybody um it's hard work sometimes you know crawling around in lofts or under floors at my age but um it can be done um and i do the job well and pretty quick because i've got a lot of experience um so i'm not going to use the word shortcuts because i don't take shortcuts but i know how to get things done quickly and i know how to, how to effectively do them same goes for fault finding you can't you can't um you can't be experienced sometimes i mean here's a good example i went to a job the other day flickering light um modern light fitting five bulbs or lamps connected to it you know one of those glassy chrome things uh, turn the switch on light on off on off but i could see that only one of the arms had a bulb in it that was working so straight away i can see it's a g4 two pin halogen bulb i've come across this before either the bulbs have been replaced with 10 watt instead of 20 watt in other words the transformer's underloaded go to the van i happen to have a few G4 20 watt bulbs in the van, pop them in, bang, the light turns on. I was there for 10 minutes. Um, and most of that time was uh, fending off the two dogs that tried to knock me over on the way in. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, um, I didn't even have to look for loose wires or check the connections. I just knew straight away that the transformer was underloaded. So things like that, a bit of experience can help on jobs like that. Um, you know, um, I like some of the more complicated fault finding jobs. I've just been to look at one today. It's not particularly complicated, but um, the whole RCD's tripped off um, on one side of the board. So he's lost pretty much all his power to most of the house because all the socket circuits are on it. It's an old 17th edition board, um, so plastic, but it's got RCD's. Um, so I did a ramp test, the RCD, it's a, it's a chimp board. Uh, I did a ramp test, the RCD's tripping out at 21 milliamps. It passes all the other tests. Um, it's a Type A C RCD. Uh, isolate all the circuits. Flick them on back on for the boiler. Bang, pop. Try it a couple of times. So there's a fault to the boiler circuit. Let's do the insulation resistance. Fails. Zero mega ohms. Um, I'm actually getting a direct reading between live and earth of, uh, of around 25 kilo ohms as well, um, without any voltage across across it so um just on a straight um low current uh resistance test so looks to me like some water's got in but there's a uh, underfloor heating and tile floor can i get to the cable no um so we're going to run a new cable um as much under the timber floor as we can because it's a converted basement as well so there's very little access um, and then come up and run it behind the kitchen and utility plinths and get to the boiler so we can solve the problem but it's a, it's a new cable uh, that needs to be running that's a typical fault finding job um, there's others along those lines as well so 
it can be interesting. The other thing I do a lot of is, is outside light and actually fitting spike lights, um, drive over lights, that sort of thing where I use, I'm going to call it technology, the latest technology, whisker boxes, um, magic gel, um, you know, you're talking at armour cable. Um, it's all, it's all standard stuff, a day in the life of an electrician. Um, you know, um, and sometimes we make mistakes as well in that, um, do we all get the money in to do an EICR before we do a board swap? No. Have I done a board swap without an EICR? Yes, most of the time. Do I get faults? Yes. Do we have to find the fault while I'm changing the board? Yes. Um, is it annoying? Does the customer not want to pay for the extra? Yes. Um, should I be doing an EICR beforehand? Yes. Will the market pay for it? I don't know. Um, you know, so um, there's rules and there's rules and there's what we can actually do because otherwise you'd price yourself out of the market sometimes. Um, you know, it's like with rewires. I mean, I'm watching other electricians on YouTube. There's people just um, watch Thomas Nagy quote for um, a rewire on a two or three bed terrace property or something like that. Semi, you know, 7,000 quid. I've just done one on a two bed terrace. Uh, worked out about 4,300 um, with a lot of fault finding and extras because the outrigger couldn't be done you know um, I think that's about right I'm in say South Manchester um, I've done a five bedroom property with a basement converted basement a loft conversion you know mega flows all sorts of things um, you know and 6,000 pound upwards wouldn't be unreasonable even I quoted one you know similar to that recently and it was ten thousand pound um, I've got to earn a wage out of it I'm only charging uh, I charge 30 pound an hour I'm not that registered I put a little bit on my materials to cover the fact that I've got to go and collect them account for them um, you know enter them into a computer system I do everything I've got to pay for my public liability insurance uh, I've got to pay for my NIC, EIC accreditation. I've got to pay for my van running cost, the van insurance. Um, I've got I've got to chase the money myself. I've got to pay for the website, you know, the business cards, the t-shirts, you name it. Um, people think that that thirty pound an hour. I mean, if people think that thirty pound an hour is excessive for that before I've got any costs, then they're on a different planet. You know, I get assessed every year from NIC, EIC. I have to stay up with the latest technology and innovations. Um, you know, there's easier ways of earning a living than being an electrician sometimes. Um, but I love it, you know. Um, uh, I've been an electrician for most of my life. Um, and, uh, and, and I like the physical aspects of the work. And, and uh, unfortunately, I have to do some paperwork and sit in the office sometimes as well. But such is life. I mean, the one thing I've learned to do now is to fill my paperwork in straight away, get it out straight away. So um, the only criteria I have is that um, until somebody's paid the invoice, I won't issue the certificate or the building notice, notice compliance certificate because... Uh, they haven't kept their end of the bargain. Um, now, obviously, I, I submit, I, I do the certificate on the NICRC website, but I won't issue it to the client um, or issue the building notice certificate until I get paid. And that's my little little bit of leverage sometimes. Um, not that I have a problem getting paid. Um, and most clients have got busy lives just like we have. So sometimes, you know, you finish your job and you think, I want paying now, I want paying now. If you just walked out of a restaurant and you'd finished a meal, you'd want paying for, for that meal there and then. Um, you know, you, you wouldn't go, oh, I'll have a think about it and uh, and I'll and I'll pay you what I think it's worth in uh, in uh, in two weeks' time. No, you, <laughs> you walk out of the restaurant having eaten the meal and having paid for the meal. Um, so when I leave site and they've got a brand new electrical installation with a new board and everything's working to spec and tested, um, I want paying for it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, you know, um, I've got a mortgage to pay. Um, a food spot on the table just like everybody else um so um if i've done something wrong or you know not kept my side of the bargain yeah there should be uh you should be able to hold something back and say you know i'll pay you the full amount when it's fixed but but people that that don't pay you at all or, or hold back all the money that's out of order if you ask me um i don't ask for money up front um because all my t materials are on trade accounts with city or whoever i mainly use city um CEF so um you know anyway um that's it um for this first video which is really um just an insight into me um 
what I do, my business and what the plans are. So my plan is to get 100,000 subscribers within a month. Doable? Maybe not. Um, <laughs> think big, think big and then uh, it can only go downhill from there. So um, yeah, um, we'll see how it goes and um, hopefully you'll be seeing more of me um, and I'll put on some real jobs. Um, and it'll be interesting to see um, how this fares and if anybody gets an anything out of it, whether that be purely entertainment, uh, whether it be um, me getting something out of it with clients, um, uh, with me getting clients as a, as a result of these videos, or whether it be apprentices or trainee electricians or even, uh, you know, other electricians looking to learn something, because uh, what I've found is you're never, you're never too old. To stop learning i learn something new pretty much every day um so um anyway um that's it for this video um hope to see you on the next one cheers bye